emerged as a unforgettable 2020 came to a close, there was much hope for a different type of year in 2021. Yet already more violence and concerns over COVID-19 have carried over into the brand new year. Joining me now to discuss how believers in the church can manage and even thrive in these times are pastors Jack Hibbs and Jim Garlow. Gentlemen, welcome to Newswatch. Good being on with you. First of all, I want to get your responses to what happened at our nation's capital this week. Dr. Garlow, we'll go to you first, then Pastor Hibbs. Well, I agree with all those who are decrying violence. Violence is never acceptable. Uh, we, I've been in that building many, many times. We have a ministry uh, there, a well-versed ministry that I'm a part of, and I respect and honor the tradition and heritage of, of that building and what it represents to our, to our government. So the thought of a few hundred people uh, running through pillaging everything is, is very offensive and totally inappropriate. Violence of this kind is always inappropriate. Amen. Dr. Hibbs? I mean, Pastor Hibbs. Yes. First, first of all, Jesus said in the last days, uh, because the love of one another will grow cold, violence would increase. We saw, and I was there, by the way, I was, I was on the mall. I was not at the Capitol. I want to make that clear. But we saw people who were gathering peacefully. And yet what we saw on the media, uh, these were militants scaling the walls mm -hmm. and breaking the glasses and going through doorways of our nation's capital. I mean, I, I can't think of anybody in their right mind who would offend or go into a place that is by all means sacred. We saw lawlessness exhibited, as Pastor Jim just said a moment ago, violence can never be condoned. Uh, but I believe the picture is bigger. What I saw in Washington, D.C. is what was reminiscent of Portland and Seattle. It's just a little too familiar. And I am not going to go with the narrative that these were Trump uh, patriots protesting. A little bit too skilled of violence, mm. too skilled of preparation, in my opinion. Yeah, it's already been pretty well documented that a lot of these people were uh, at BLM protests and Antifa protests. So, yeah, you're, you're definitely right about that. Dr. Garlow, what are your thoughts, though, about all the prayer effort that went into the le this election? You know, there was so many. I've never seen so much prayer for one election before. You know, what happened? Did God not hear our prayers? Well, that's a, that's a fair question. There was an enormous amount of prayer. Uh, he, he, he says when we pray according to his will, which has happened, that it does not return null and void. Um, we're on a pretty short term here. Oftentimes we'll read something in the scripture. We don't realize that that passage of scripture covers 400 years. Uh, we're pretty impatient. We want the response in 60 days or one day if we can. Uh, you watch, you wait, you'll see. Uh, God is going to rise in a way that we have not yet been aware of. So we're not giving up on that. I want to go back just to, to, to a moment because uh, I really appreciate Jack Hibbs is a good friend of mine who has brilliant insights. And I, I'm glad he brought that up about the potential Antifa. There were so many people on the ground I've talked to, including members of Congress, who uh, have been quite adequate that that was infiltrated uh, by outside groups. I want to call attention to what we had to listen to for seven months when our cities burned this last summer. What was quoted to us over and over was Martin Luther King saying, uh, riots are the language of the unheard. And that's how it was justified on one network after another, after another, after another, repeated. Mm -hmm. Now, if that statement is a true statement, I don't think rioting is ever appropriate, but if, if that statement is accepted as an axiom of our culture, what is being unheard? And I want to say 74 million people have been be called, called deplorable. They've been looked at by the elites in condescending fashion. Even Anderson Cooper yesterday said they go back to their little holiday inns and eat at their olive gardens as a condescending statement that he doesn't go to places like that. They have been put down because they cling to their gods and their guns. They have been harassed in every form. Every negative article has been written about them imaginable. I was asked to speak on probably the most influential to the most influential newspaper in America earlier today. And, and quite frankly, that newspaper has probably not said a single positive thing about anybody who voted for Trump for the last four years. And then they wonder why they're upset when the evidence can't be looked at. Mm -hmm. We don't know how the election went. All we're asking for, I've interviewed senators, state senators in multiple places, multiple states, most recently Georgia. All we asked for was a 10-day pause to look and see if there's evidence. Yeah, that's now, frustrating. That's a justifiable request. Yeah. And what we get, 
No, they're refusing to even look at the evidence. And in courts, we were turned down because of, quote, lack of standing. I know that game that gets played by judges. Let me jump in here and real so quick. Uh, let me jump in. I'm okay. sorry, uh, but I need to ask Pastor Hibbs this. Um, you know, there are Christians in both the Democrat and Republican parties. We saw this lady from Delaware, Congresswoman, praying uh, during the, the riot. How, how do we address the differences over politics in the body of Christ? Well, it's a great question, by the way, because our founding fathers had no problem with that. If we look at the founding documents and what they meant or what we look at as intent, they had no problem mixing the Judeo-Christian worldview with the very nation that they were creating. So here's the beautiful thing about it. I would like to answer your initial question this way. I do believe God is answering our prayers right now. I don't think they were ignored. I don't know what the answer is. He does. Mm. But the amazing thing is, as long as God's people are seeking his face, uh, I think God's at work. I am not discouraged. Do I love my country? Absolutely. But I'm a Christian before I am an American. But uh, the truth of the matter is that with all that's going on, how about this? Give us an opportunity. Let's let pastors preach the gospel publicly for 30 days across this land and preach Preach the love, forgiveness, and grace of God, because here's the truth. The only answer for America today is in the pulpits. That's like it was in the colonial period. That's what Alexis de Tocqueville found out when he came in from France and checked it out. He said the power and the goodness of God in America was found in the pulpits. What if we just threw off PC for a month <laughs> and let me, us, Jim, preach the gospel of God's love across a nation that is coming apart? Why not? And the other thing is this. That invasion of the state capitol, do you know that's the first time it's been invaded since 1812 was by the British who wanted to destroy our country? I submit to you guys that the people that invaded that capital were of the same spirit of the British in 1812. They are anarchists. They want to destroy our Judeo-Christian nation. And that's mm -hmm. what was going on, in my opinion. All right, gentlemen, great answers. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we look forward to having you back on again.